Next up, we have the CEO of Sereno Scientific, Stan Sorensen. Welcome, Stan. Thank you. So I'm uh, very pleased to be here and present uh, Sereno Scientific uh, and our progress over the last period and our exciting uh, future. So uh, Sereno Scientific is, uh, has a vision to transform treatments for common and cardiovascular disease. Um, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death uh, globally and it's twice as many people die of cardiovascular disease than cancer. And there is a significant market need due to the high mortality and the significant morbidity that is attached to this disease. Sereno Scientific was founded in 2012 um, out of research, Sverker Jan in uh, Gothenburg. We have our headquarters in uh, Gothenburg at AstraZeneca Spy Venture Hub, but our footprint has expanded significantly. So we have a daughter company, a subsidiary in Boston in the US, and we also have a significant research collaboration now established at the University of Michigan in uh, US. We have a pipeline portfolio of a, a lead a drug, a CS1, um, uh, moving into phase two in rare disease in pulmonary arterial hypertension. And we have two preclinical programs in cardiovascular disease. Serena was listed on the stock market spotlight in 2016. Um, back to cardiovascular disease, uh, it causes the most death worldwide and, and about 22 million people are about to die of this disease by 2030. Uh, and as you can see on the right side here is a significant cost to society, Europe uh, illustrated here and, and US. So there's lots of work to be done in cardiovascular disease to help these patients uh, and all the stakeholders here. Uh, many of the uh, therapies are insufficient and can be improved, both for survival, better survival, and for better morbidity. Um, we have our product portfolio in common and rare diseases. So CS1, as I mentioned, is about to enter phase two this fall. It's an HDAC inhibitor, and the indication that we are pursuing is pulmonary arterial hypertension, the rare disease. We have two Preclinical programs, uh, CS585, it's a prostacycline analog, and CS014, it's also an HDAC inhibitor as the first compound is. Uh, CS585, uh, we just acquired the rights uh, to evaluate and then uh, licensing, with, uh, licensing in with the exclusive rights if the evaluation is uh, positive. I'll come back to this later. Both of these preclinical programs are in cardiovascular disease. So if we go back here to um, uh, CS1 and CS014 program, our clinical and one of our preclinical programs, they're both uh, acting as epigenetic modulators. And epigenetic modulation is uh, uh, having an impact on gene expression without altering the structure of DNA. And uh, our compounds are HDAC inhibitors known to be epigenetic modulators and they've been applied for cancer treatment uh, but never to our knowledge to for cardiovascular disease. And our vision is to unlock the potential of HDAC inhibition for cardiovascular disease therapies to the benefit of patients worldwide. Um, and as I mentioned, CS1 about to move into phase two clinical trial uh, for the rare disease pulmonary arterial hypertension. It is a rare disease that affects five to 15 people out of 100,000, and um, they experience shortness of breath, fatigue, etc. Initially leads to problems with oxygen supply and, and eventually fatal right heart failure. Uh, lung transplantation is the only real cure, but most patients don't uh, get to get that uh, option. So there is a poor prognosis and unsatisfactory treatments for this disease. Um, now, why are we moving into uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension with our lead candidate drug? Well, we have discovered that we have very beneficial effects uh, mimicking almost the disease progression 
of pulmonary arterial disease itself. So we have documented antifibrotic, anti-inflammatory, pulmonary pressure reduction, and also antithrombotic uh, impact with HDAC inhibition in our substance. So there's a very good opportunity here for us to have a positive impact for these patients. Um, if we look at the market, uh, the market is around seven billion dollars today and uh, 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 growing with uh, to reach about 10 billion by 2027 when we estimate that we might be able to reach the market. Uh, so it's a, it's a significant market, it's growing, and the therapies there are insufficient for the patients. We uh, applied to FDA and got orphan drug designation approved in March last year. And that gives us seven years exclusivity upon approval on the market in the United States, which is the major market for pH. So what have we seen earlier with CS1? Well. As I mentioned, our preclinical and peer studies have shown that we have antithrombotic effects. We prevent thrombosis in in vitro and in animals. We reduce pulmonary hypertension. We prevent fibrosis development and remodeling uh, in rats with this pulmonary high pressure. Uh, and we also have anti-inflammatory and antifibrotic pulmonary vascular effects. So very interesting data. And we brought CS1 through a phase one trial with good safety and tolerability, and we also achieved our uh, pharmacokinetics that we were looking for. Uh, in addition, we also saw a significant reduction of PI, a marker for thrombosis, uh, and also for fibrosis development. So we have uh, successfully completed the phase one, and now we're preparing our IND submission for a phase two and that study to be started later this year. So the phase two study uh, is about to start in September and the principal investigator and the latest additional member to our scientific advisor board uh, will be uh, Raymond Bensa. He is professor of medicine at Wexner Medical Center in Ohio State University and he's one of the top thought leaders for pH in the world. We will look at um, safety and tolerability as the primary endpoint. We will also look at uh, standard efficacy endpoint for this uh, patient group. Uh, a calculated validated risk score will be measured and we'll also look uh, for uh, efficacy and look for dose finding for the next study. Uh, uh, we will apply a cutting edge technology for the pressure measurement. We will have implantable device measuring 24-7 the pressure in the lungs. There will be 30 patients and about six centers in the U.S. only. Um, and it, the study will be conducted under the orphan drug designation status that was awarded by the U.S. FDA in March last year. The expected timeline is start September and uh, study results in uh, the fall of 22. Very excited about this study. So moving back here to our preclinical development programs, and I'm very pleased to uh, bring these up and present them because they are uh, a result of our st strategy to broaden our pipeline and, and make uh, build a biotech company in cardiovascular disease. So we have two programs, as I mentioned, CS 585, just signed a deal and a press release about that deal this spring with University of Michigan. And uh, since before we have a CSO14. Uh, CSO14 is an HDAC inhibitor and CS585 is a prostacycline analog. And we just uh, released a press release on uh, our collaboration deal that we have made with the University of Michigan to study these two uh, programs and bring those two programs and substances into MAN. Uh, two programs, 24 months each, and uh, the programs will be led by uh, Dr. Mike Hollinstadt. And actually this week uh, we released a press release that uh, we have signed uh, and engaged uh, Michael Hollinstadt as uh, Director of Translational 
research for Sereno. So he will be in charge of these programs and lead them at University of Michigan and also work with us in our senior management team. Just uh, to highlight uh, the impressive scientific advisory board that uh, are backing our uh, vision and our technology. We're Bertram Pitt as uh, Professor Emeritus, University of Michigan. We have two, uh, Deepak Bath and Gordon Williams from Harvard Medical School. We have Faya Sanad uh, from France. Gunnar Olson, previously head of cardiovascular and GI research for the whole Astra Corporation. And the latest addition here, Raymond Bensa, who is the top thought leader of PH globally and will be the principal investigator for our phase two program coming up. This is just to highlight our management team. We are 10 uh, very ambitious, uh, high energy people and a lot of profession here uh, and uh, believe that we uh, have uh, succeeded very well with our activities over the last period uh, as the team has been built. I'm very proud of, of our achievements. As you can see here, uh, we have new additions here, I should say. Michael Hollenstadt to the left in the corner, uh, head of uh, translational research. Tina Seppe just joined us as director for clinical research. So she's, she's in charge of the uh, phase two program and the IND submission. Uh, and then also Stine Burke Hansen uh, joined us as project director. So those are the latest additions. So we're a strong, competent team here. So to finalize um, what has happened uh, recently, we have strengthened our team for the clinical study, as I mentioned. We have expanded the team for preclinical phase with Mike Hollenstadt. Uh, we obtained actually two uh, patent approvals in two key markets, Japan and Russia, this year for CS1. We in-licensed a preclinical program from University of Michigan, CS585, in cardiovascular disease, prostacycline analog. And uh, we have initiated our preclinical development programs for these two CS585 and CS014 at University of Michigan this year. Um, coming up, uh, key milestones is phase uh, two IND approval by the FDA. Uh, and then uh, the start of uh, the phase two program with CS1 in September of this year. So just the last slide here, a broad overview of our strategy to build uh, Sereno as a biotech company and provide value for patients and stakeholders, shareholders here. Um, we start the phase two study in uh, this year in September and we have started our preclinical phase uh, two programs at University of Michigan to bring those two compounds into man within 24 months. We expect to have our phase two program be able to report it uh, the fall of next year. And we expect to be able to uh, initiate a phase 2B3 study in 2023. Um, with regards to the preclinical phase, we expect to start uh, phase one studies with CS585 and CSO14 uh, by 2023 in the fall. That's it. Thank you. Well, thanks so much uh, for that presentation, Stan. You're welcome. And uh, I just have a few questions for you. Uh, you mentioned the addition of uh, two new preclinical programs to your pipeline. I was wondering how will those uh, add value uh, to Sereno Scientific in the long run? Well, I think uh, there are several aspects of, of uh, why you build a portfolio and a pipeline uh, if you want to build a biotech company. I think uh, previously Serena was a project company more than a biotech company. So we had one project uh, moving uh, CS1 into uh, clinical phase. Uh, and now we have added two preclinical programs. So the reason that you do that is that you uh, you have the vision to bring new good uh, pharmaceutical drugs to the market to help patients. But also uh, you have a broader pipeline that has a difference in uh, target, but also difference in timing. So you actually hedge your development programs when you have a portfolio. And you're developing them in parallel, but they have different phases. So it's, a, it's, it's the way it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And uh, actually, to add on to that, uh, I also wanted to ask, 
both of these are through a collaboration with the University of Michigan. And uh, how long do you uh, think this, uh, or where where will this uh, collaboration take you in the long run? Do you expect uh, uh, more clinical programs through this collaboration? Maybe. Well, I should say that um, the current uh, portfolio that Sereno has is and is pretty set now, uh, just now, because we have our clinical program for CS1 coming up, phase two. Uh, we have a CRO contracted, we're approaching FDA now for the approval, and we have the CRO to run the, the trial, et cetera, and the team to do it. And then for the phase one, or the preclinical programs, we have that all agreed with the University of Michigan, and we have leadership in place uh, and experience to get it done. Uh, so now we are very much in an execution phase of these three programs, uh, the clinical and the two preclinical. Pre but I would then again say that we are still looking for additions to our portfolio. And um, the, the addition of CS585, the prostacycline analog, came about uh, us being curious about what was there. Uh, so I think that was a, a, a uh, preparedness meets opportunity, mm -hmm. so equals luck. But you know, it, it's good timing. Yeah. So I think uh, it, it's not uh, excluded that we will add other projects to because we have a very strong cardiovascular team, both scientific advisory board and operationally. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, finally, last question. Uh, of course, everybody's looking forward to the initiation of the phase two trial with CS1. Uh, but besides this uh, great milestone for this year, uh, what is uh, maybe another milestone that uh, we should be looking forward to from Sereno this year? Well, I think that uh, the start of the trial, obviously, but prior to the trial, we actually need uh, the approval from FDA of the IND, mm -hmm. uh, Investigational New Drug Applications. You, you have to get FDA's nod uh, to go ahead and do clinical trials. So that application is going to go in and then y you get the approval and we hope that we'll get the approval without too, too much discussions. Uh, and then we'll start the trial. Um, the other thing that will happen this year is that uh, although we did a, a directed a share issue, a fast share issue in August, September last year that brought in around 60 million to the company, uh, and most of that money is still in the company, I would say. Uh, but a, a financial event coming up in, in uh, this Q3 is a uh, warrants package that was attached to that uh, share issue. There was one coming up now in September and one next year. And those two warrant packages are fully prescribed around 100 million Swedish each. So those are financial milestones coming up and they are important for us. And I think that based on our performance so far, people should be pretty interested to go into to Sereno, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot. That's a very exciting times coming up for Sereno indeed. And uh, yeah, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you.